Hi, I'm Hal Aronson of WeShare Solar, and today I'm going to show you how to assemble the WeShare Solar 601, which is our learning model kit. Uh, the first thing you want to do is pull out all the contents in the case. This is a home run cable. This is the chassis. This is the charge controller. A couple of screwdrivers, one Phillips and one slotted. This is the bag of parts, sockets, and circuit breakers and screws. And we'll take this out and we'll organize it, try not to lose any pieces. Here are the circuit breakers, which are also switches. This is a pop-up breaker. These are the DC sockets. These are the terminal blocks. And this is the solar socket where the home run cable gets plugged into. These are nuts that go with the sockets. This is the all-important edge liner. These are bushings which will protect the wires going through the chassis. And then there's just some uh, bolts or we call machine screws with nuts. So save your plastic bag for later. We'll also pull out our wires. And in this bag we have all the wires that already have the connectors on them so that it's easy to make a professional quality connection. And we encourage the students to organize the wires by color so that when they're assembling them, it's easy to find them. And it's also just a good habit. So the first step that we want to take is to put in the battery socket. So the positive or the red wire is going to be at the top of the socket. And we put it in from the back of the chassis. And it takes quite a bit of effort. What you're actually doing is you're pushing part of it through and it's going to snap into place probably heard that nice sound. And now we have a very nice connection for our battery socket. Next we're going to put on the edge liner. And this is to protect the battery on the side where the battery terminals are. Okay, there we go. Okay, and once you get it on there, it'll stay on there very nicely. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and put in the DC sockets. And when you do that, make sure that the writing is facing the top of the chassis because that will give it the proper orientation when you wire it on the back later. So I pop these in, flip it over, put on the nuts, these plastic nuts. And they're very easy if you get them lined up uh, properly on the threads. If you don't, they don't go on very easily. So give it a couple tries, but you can see how nicely that just flies on there. Next I'm going to pop in um, the bushings. And these come in, these are really nice. The students should take turns because they have that very satisfying pop when you get them in. And this protects the wires that go through the metal so that the insulation doesn't get nicked. You always want to protect the insulation on your wires to prevent any kind of a short circuit. The next piece you want to put in is the uh, solar socket. And this also has an orientation. You want the um, writing to be facing the top. It's got a little printed number here. That should be facing the top of the, um, of the chassis. And then we just pop in four machine screws that will just go right through here nicely. And because the learning model kit's designed to be assembled and disassembled, don't worry about getting the nuts on there too tightly. What I would do is just put all four in here and then get the nuts on uh, from the back side. If your finger holds the uh, screw from the front, these go on really quickly. Okay, so we'll get that on there. Great. And then you can just finger tighten these. And one of the cool ways to do this is you can take the Phillips screwdriver, hold the nut on one side while you're turning it on the other side. And now as long as we're in the mode of bolts, we might as well put on the charge controller. This is a more delicate piece of equipment, so handle it quick, um, gently. And the charge controller goes into these, this space here where we have the four holes. Again, just pop in the bolts. This is a pretty snug fit, so you can put one in there just to locate it. 
Okay. When we get these chassis made, we have to get technical drawings that are near perfect so that all the screws line up with the holes in the chassis and the holes in the charge controller. And as you can see, this is even easier because we're not near a socket that we can just easily get these nuts on. And hopefully this is not the first time your students have ever used bolts and nuts, but maybe it is. And again, you can hold the nut while you tighten up your screws. We've got almost all of our components in. Now all we need to do is put in the circuit breakers. This is a two-pole breaker. It's got two sets of blades because it actually controls two circuits, the battery circuit uh, going to the charge controller and the solar circuit going to the charge controller. When you put it in, make sure that the on position is the line and the off position, which is toward the bottom, is the circle. And these are embossed on the breaker. You just push it straight down and it will snap into position. And the same with this breaker here. In this case, on is going to be to the right. So that will be the line. And when you push it through, little tabs lock into the panel. So now this is all very snug. And the final piece is what we call a pop-up breaker. This is a breaker that's not a switch. It only gets activated if too much current goes into this socket. So this is just uh, protection that's not control. And you just push it through and this also snaps into position. And before we uh, flip over our chassis, we're going to want to put in the wires that are going to the charge controller. And this charge controller is a very cool terminal block. The way it works is you pre-loosen the screws and that will open the space for the wire to get pushed in here. So before I start the wiring, I'm just going to loosen all these screws. You can have the students actually peek in the window there to see the space open up for the wires. So this is the socket that receives the battery plug. And so this is going to be battery negative. So this one is going to go to battery negative on the charge controller. So that's the fourth hole. But from the left, it's the third hole. So we're going to stick that one through here. And then put it into the battery negative on the charge controller. We've already loosened up the space for it, so it'll slide right in. And then we tighten it down. And we'll make it tight, but not super tight, because this will be undone again. So that's your battery negative. Okay. The battery positive is just going to go to the circuit breaker. So we'll get that on now. And do you notice the, the little like staple shape inside here? Be sure that when you put it on the prong that it goes in between the pieces of metal here so that it really makes a good electrical connection. So I slide that on like this. And it's almost good, and I didn't demonstrate this, but you should hold the breaker while you push it on. And now we'll complete the battery circuit. Here's the battery um, positive that goes from the breaker and completes the circuit to the charge controller. So we'll slide this one on. And see, I do it this way so that it fits nicely onto the breaker. And then we'll put this through the battery positive. Battery positive is this hole right here, the third one from the left. But when you turn it over, it's the fourth one from the left. So we go through and we put it into the battery positive uh, termination and tighten it with the screw. There we go. Now let's go ahead and do the solar wiring. So the solar positive wire is going to go from this blade here at the top of the socket to the, uh, this blade here on this double pole breaker. So we have two kinds of connectors here. This is a straight connector and this one's a flag or 90 degree. So we use the straight connector um, on the top here. And then we're going to just wrestle this on there. Sometimes they're kind of hard to wrestle on. 
and you may find that if you flip it, it's easier, but just work it on there. And then the flag goes on um, the breaker. So we put this in, supporting the breaker, and now we complete the solar circuit with this wire. The soldered end is going to go to the charge controller. The flag goes on to the breaker. And we look over here, and the solar positive is this hole here. When we flip it over, it's the one furthest to the right. So we just push it through, put it into the terminal block, we have our screwdriver ready. See, I kind of push on the wire. That's to make sure the wire is all the way in as I tighten it down. We don't only want it to be partially in. So that's good and tight. It's always good to check your wires after you tighten them too, just to make sure they're really in there and you didn't get a false sense that they were there. Now let's complete the negative of the solar. And you see, just like with the battery port, the negative from the solar socket is going to make it all the way to the charge controller, not going through a breaker. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now we've got uh, two-thirds of our circuits done and it's time to go to the loads. The loads are kind of cool. Watch what's going to happen. We're going to get a positive coming from the charge controller that's going to feed both this socket and that socket. But before it gets to those sockets, it's going to have to go through a switch on the top because this is where we're going to plug in our light and a circuit breaker on the bottom because this is where we're going to plug in our loads. This provides safety and control. So. Um, you see on this wire we have both a soldered end and a stranded end. So we want to go ahead and put the soldered end into the charge controller. And this will be load positive. And you can see the symbol for load. It's that little light bulb. We'll just stick that in there. Tighten it. And now how is this wire going to distribute electricity to both this switch and this breaker? The way it's going to do it is it's going to use a terminal block. We call these Wago terminal blocks. That's the brand name. And you pull the levers a full 90 degrees. You're going to be afraid you might break it, but you're not. That's how much it has to be pulled back in order to open a slot. You push the wire in. I'm going to put this one in the middle because it's going to feed two circuits on either side. But it doesn't really matter where you put it because what happens is that when you put the wires in here, they become all electrically bonded. It's like um, putting them all under one screw. And then we're going to use flag connectors to get to both the breakers, both breakers. So I'll pull off the insulation on the wire. It's just there to hold the wires together until you're ready to use them. And if they were a little bit splayed, you could always give them a little twist. Push it into the Wago. Close the lever and give it a little pull to make sure it's good. Take your other wire with a flag on it, pull off the insulation, push it into the Wago. And now electricity will come from the charge controller and into both of these circuits. So I'll put it on this side. And this side. And then to complete it, you can see that the electricity is now going into the switch. And then when you turn on the switch, it goes from the switch to the socket. And the positive side of the socket is the blade that's closer to the middle. There's also a little plus sign there. So we can just put that on there and put it on. And here, when, I, when, when the wires are close together like this, I like to put a little loop in it and that makes it much easier to wire and puts less stress on the wires and connectors. And now you can see that the electricity would go from the charge controller to the terminal block and from there make it to the switch and from the switch to the socket. And we will go ahead and now complete the positive side of this lower socket as well. Okay, so now we're going to go from the other side of this breaker to the socket. Now this brake is a little more delicate, so you'll want to give it some support here. I'm holding it from below. And now I'm putting it to the middle blade or the blade closer to the center of this socket. 
And now we've got both, we've got the positive sides of both of these sockets ready to go. All we have to do is complete the negatives. And this is a lot like this wire coming from the charge controller. We take the soldered end of the negative, push it through the one remaining port, and put it to the load negative on the charge controller. I'll wire up the terminal block. By the way, I wouldn't use my fingernail to get these started because you might have one of those yucky experiences of your fingernail getting pulled backwards. I'll pop in my two flags. And I'll complete the negatives. So I'll take this one and it'll go to the negative side of this socket. And this one goes to the negative side of this socket. See how these are more toward the edge of the socket? That's because that's where the negative conductor on the inside of the socket is. 